Curtis again. Welcome back. Uh, we've, we've finished our room. It's very dark green. Uh, I like it. It looks really good. I love being outside. I love uh, wild places. And my wife is amazing and picked this color for our, our dining room. And I'm super excited to keep adding to our dining room. Yeah, I, I, may, I might spin the camera around and show you what it looks like in a bit. Uh, I might not. I might forget. <laughs> anyway, I hope it's not so echoey anymore. Um, on to the last devotional of this series. Uh, the uh, Let Them Have Dominion devotional series off the YouVersion Bible app. This one is entitled, Obeying God in the Garden. Now, we've talked about the garden being uh, a kind of symbol for your home through, the, through this study and um, a place where you can learn those spiritual disciplines, where you can teach those spiritual disciplines to your children, where you can build that place, that, uh, that, that house, that garden, where spiritual maturity is developed in your family, uh, in yourself first, obviously, right? Uh, I read something really interesting this week. I don't remember where it was online or in somebody's Facebook post, but it was this, this quote, and I'm going to forget was, uh, who, who said it, but it was, when you, when you go to the source, rather than being a cup, or, yeah, rather than being a cup that gets filled and then pours out of, be a reservoir that fills other from its overflow. I thought that was really neat. I wanted to share it with you because I, I love the idea of that, right? Where, get, where you're being filled, and then when you are totally filled, you, you overflow into others, right? I love it. I love the imagery in there. Anyway, here it is. I'm going to read through the devotional. I'll read the, the, the biblical verse there. It's uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses, verse 18. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to that at the very end here. But here it is. Obeying God in the garden, um, day four of the Let Them Have Dominion uh, devotional series. Your obedience in the garden prepares you to fulfill your global purpose. Obey God in every season, even in the small things. Disobeying God, even in the garden, uh, inhibits your ability to expand beyond your family's starting point. In fact, the Garden of Eden and the wilderness could represent the condition of your family's spiritual heart. When you're in the garden, following the Word of God, you're in His will, God's will. Flourishing within the Word. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, flourishing within the parameters of the word. That's what that says. The wilderness represents the exact opposite. In, it is the penalty for disobeying God's word. I get the imagery there. Um, the wilderness represents a dry place and separation from God. In fact, disobeying God's word leads to a spiritual and emotional withering. Uh, I've been through that. I've, I see where that's coming from. God intended for man to dominate, to rule over the earth by executing upon his word, God's word. Right? That's, that's makes sense there. There is no true success outside of God. Fulfilling your purpose and obeying God in the garden will prepare you and your family for future success. God wants to direct the course of your family. Obedience will steer the course of your home and establish future generations. I'm talking about obedience to God, right? Following God's will. Your obedience today sets the tone for your family's future. <clears throat> today, when you set the pattern of obedience within the walls of your family, you teach future generations how to obey God, even in adversity. Probably where it matters the most. Your faith-filled actions today serve as an example to and for future generations. Spend time praying with and for your family. Worship together. Spend time in God's presence. Build together. Build a generational lineage that's founded upon Christ. Cultivate the ground of your garden together. It's in the garden where spiritual warfare is learned and prayer strategies are unveiled. Shift the trajectory of your family's future by obeying God in the garden and take dominion together. Together. That ties in. It does. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable to him. Mm. All right, so we've been talking a lot about spiritual disciplines and like, like 
following God's will and using your home as as that place where you have a, a sense of safety and and intimacy with God. Uh, if if you haven't thought about your the place you live like that, it's a really neat thing, and I challenge you to think about your home as that place, right? As we struggle to to live our lives daily, to be in passionate pursuit of Christ, right? As we struggle to not sin, to not fall short, right? Um, let's let's face it. We all have moments of, of weakness, moments of temptation, where we either make it through or we we fall back on old habits that lead us away from God, right? That you know what I'm talking about, right? I don't have to lay it out for you. Um, I really, I get what he's talking about with, with the garden and the wilderness, the imagery there about a dry place, right? Talking about the desert, back in Deuteronomy, uh, or forward rather from where we are in, this, in scripture. Um, you know, like the, the Israelites were being disciplined for not having obedience, right? Moses goes up on the mountaintop, brings back the Ten Commandments, and what have the Israelites done? He's been gone a while, right? Like 40 days in the, in the mountains. He comes back with the, the, the commandments, and like he's been, he's been so close to God's presence, he's like emanating light, right? Reflecting it, right? It's awe-inspiring, but the people are terrified. And then he gets down there, he finds this golden calf, and he like, Moses loses his mind. He throws the tablets down and goes, what are you doing, right? So as punishment for that, no one from that generation made it into the, the promised land, right? They stayed in the desert for 40 years. Big deal. So that's what that's talking about, right? Obedience matters. Um, so I, I, honestly, I talked to this about uh, this, this Bible study over with my wife a little bit because I struggle with, with the language in the last little bit here, right? Where he goes, in the, it's in the garden where spiritual warfare is learned. And something that really, it's just, it nags at me as of late is this, this language of, of we have to fight for our faith, right? And, and you know, I was, at, I was at a wedding recently, um, a Christian couple, and, and it was so aggressive and it was like the, like the pastor was on a soapbox. It was not our church. It wasn't in Moose Jaw at all. It was, it was in a different city altogether, right? But it was so visceral in its tone and hard to find the talk of love in, in what was being said. And it, it grieved my soul so much to see those in the room who weren't of the Christian faith reacting to what's, what was being said, where a wedding should be talked about love and the intimacy that you are about to enter into. For people to leave weeping, for feeling like they had just been attacked, right? Non-believers weeping for being attacked at a wedding ceremony. My heart still aches for those people. Now, sorry. No, what I take and I struggle with is this language of warfare, right? Jesus said, those who live by the sword will die by the sword. Now, you, lots, of, lots of people are going to have comments about this. I get it. I get that we've got to pray. We've got to get down on our knees and pray. And we've got to live a life and, and stand for what our beliefs are. I'm not discrediting that. What I'm saying is if you're not acting in love... You're not acting as Christ wants you to, right? The greatest command was to, was to love God with all your heart. The second was to love your neighbor as yourself. The next part of that line though, right? In the garden where spiritual warfare is learned and prayer strategies are unveiled. You want to talk about prayer strategies? 
I struggle at prayer. I really do. I I have gotten better, right? There have been, I, I've had to dedicate like, first thing in the morning, wake up, pray for, I don't know, no time limit, but like greet God in the morning when I wake up. Start my day like that. And, and it's been something I've begun to yearn for. The moment in the morning where I get to, where I get to pray and, and then talk to God. And then I get to kiss my wife goodbye before I go to work. She's still sleeping and probably snoring. I didn't say that. No, I didn't. It's that beautiful mane of hair that hard to walk away from. But, um, in the garden, prayer strategies. You, you wanna, you wanna learn how to pray and be so focused and have so much passion in your prayer that you are sweating, that you are sweating blood because of how, how much energy you are pouring into that prayer. That will change the world. You want to dedicate yourself to something? That's how you do it. Right? I, I can't, I can't imagine the cost that people have to pay to to worship God across this this planet, right? Some people are running for their lives. I live in a house with no danger, right? I get to go out and hunt and bring food home to my family. I don't have to worry about somebody else shooting at me. I'm safe. I'm making it home to my family. My biggest concern it's a bear I might run into while I'm going after an elk. <laughs> really? And that's, as much as that's terrifying, it's also kind of exhilarating. But that's, that's it. We live in such a great place here in Moose Jaw, in, in Saskatchewan, in Canada. But you want to talk about spiritual warfare? Get on your knees, man. You want to fight? Learn how to pray. Get down. Pray on your knees until you are sweating drops of blood. Give your life in that way. Man. I love it. I love how this wraps all together, right? We've talked about God doing these things for Adam and giving Adam the opportunity to grow in spiritual maturity. And when a man is ready, right? God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. I didn't think I was ever going to be ready to get married. And um, in, in college, when I was wrapping up, I don't know what, my third year. I was six, because I'm slow at learning. It takes me time. I, I had some, some good people that I spent a lot of time with. My family I lived in the town I was going to school in. And I would go over and have, have meals with the, with the parents. Um, I, I, I got talking about, I think I want to marry Julianne. I, I really do. And they knew her. They went to church with her growing up. And I said, but I, like, I, I just, like, I don't know. Do, do I, like, do I need to be married? Do I want it? Do I need it? Is this what's good, what it intended for me? And I was struggling because I, I felt like I wasn't hearing from God for an answer on that. I'm going to put that sheet of paper down. And one of the wisest things I've ever heard was if you need them in your life, you're probably not ready. But if you could live your life without them and still want them to be with you, then you are probably ready to be married. And that's kind of where I was at, right? And I'm not saying <laughs> my marriage has been easy. I'm not saying Jeanette and I haven't struggled, but this has been probably the best 13 years of my life. And God definitely worked on me and has worked on me and my heart throughout this time frame and used Junan to soften me in ways I didn't think possible. Um, and this, this devotional talks about you know, praying together and, and worshiping in the home. I'm blessed because my wife is a fantastic worship leader. She wor leads worship in the church. But she'll be playing and practicing for worship on the piano, which is literally to my left over here. And I'll be like playing a video game with buddies online. Uh, Colin, this is your throw out. He's better at this than I am. But, right, I'll put the thing on mute, the 
voice chat and I'll just start singing worship music while I'm playing video games because there's something that just wells up inside of me that wants to praise God in the middle of my normal life. And it happens and it's a good thing. Men, learn how to pray. Learn how to pursue God's heart and he will fill yours. All right. I think I'm, I think I'm done for today. I'm going to start off a new series next week. I don't actually know what I'm doing yet. I may struggle a little bit to find something. I don't know. I haven't actually started. I'll look tomorrow. <laughs> um, but as always, contact me over, over Facebook Messenger. I will try and get together with you guys if you want to talk there. Or we can talk on Facebook Messenger. Comment on this, this video chat. right? Please understand. We record this ahead of time. I will be free to interact and, and, and text back and forth. I'm, I'm also watching it with you guys. It's not, it's, it's kind of a fun thing we're doing. Um, and if you have something you want to talk about or you have a devotional you want to go through, awesome. Connect with me about it. We'll, we'll see what we can do about a video series on that. It'll be fun. Uh, but here we are. God, we, uh, we thank you that we have the opportunity and the safety uh, and that you provided for us in such great ways in, in our city, in our province, in our country, that we are that blessed. Um, Jesus, we want to lift your name up and we give thanks uh, to, the, to the teachings you've given us. We pray that we can grow into them and become men after your own heart. That when we finally get to come home to you, you greet us at the door and say, well done, good and faithful one. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Have a great week. Love you all.